Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to Wednesday night, 9.50 p.m. California time, June 4th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity shows a 4.1 earthquake in the red flag out here. It looks like across the, um, right around the Turkey area. Also a little 1.3 across California. Let's go ahead and start off here on the West Coast, see what we got brewing out here. Uh, a couple of earthquakes here in the last hour, one at the, at the northern end of the Sacramento Valley up above me uh, for a 1.7 earthquake. A couple more earthquakes triggering up here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone uh, just south of Eureka. Now, that uh, these are very shallow quakes. This one here just right at the surface level. Uh, I got to check trimmer map, see what we got for Cascadia trimmer this evening because maybe it's kicking back up it is uh, 72 epicenters but this time way up north here at the northern end that's a segment that has not uh, seen any trimmer activity in a little while if we go back the last month here uh, all the trimmer activity has been down here across this area so now we're starting to fill in up north watch for some larger movement up here potentially uh, looks like things are starting to uh, get busy up there across that area I was looking at, um, before we get into the rest of the earthquake activity, Crescent City sits up here, uh, Northern California, the southern end, a very dangerous area, southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. And I noticed here on the GPS station in Crescent City, uh, it sits just offshore here, uh, and this is an area that we would expect um, a vertical displacement, right? A vertical displacement because of the subduction zone here. Uh, the uh, Juan de Fuca plate as a whole uh, subducts underneath the North American plate here. Kind of, it goes underneath this area, but also folds the North American plate in a way that builds up the strain. This is a fold and thrust belt, uh, and it's been building up for 325 years. It, uh, looking at this GPS station here, there was a period of uh, high amount recently of elevated uh, vertical displacement there that may have something to do with the uh, a lot a lot of the trimmer activity here recently uh, but that there is across the cat the uh, crescent city area southern end of the cascadia and that's interesting that we had a fairly decent vertical uplift there um, could be not a good sign uh, i was looking at a couple other ones out here as well around brookings of course long term these are always going up here and they've been going up since uh, 1700, since the last big earthquake. This one doesn't show any rapid uh, recent activity, just continued vertical displacement there, building up some steam. But the Crescent City one there uh, is a little interesting. It, it potentially, I, I don't know if that's an error or not. I'll have to look into that a little bit more. But uh, let's see what this one looks like. That one's kind of a oddball one, a little bit further down south. Yeah, this one's kind of going down a little bit. But uh, anyway, I figured I would share that because it's a little interesting activity. If that's uh, getting some unusual vertical displacement uplift there, that's uh, a bad sign for the uh, Cascadia. Uh, further down south here across Northern California, away from Northern California, Bay Area, a couple smaller quakes here. One on the Hayward Fault this morning. Uh, a couple other smaller quakes there from yesterday. Uh, getting some earthquake activity just off the Parkfield section and the creeping section here of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, Parkfield segment coming up on a uh, probably a time period here where we should be seeing a six-pointer any any day now. It's got regular intervals there of 20 to 22 years, and the last one was back in 2004 as far as a six-pointer magnitude earthquake goes. Uh, Southern California down here, a one earthquake. Above the 2.5 level, it's going to be a 3.2. This originally coming in as a 3.5. Got a little bit of a downgrade there. A couple smaller aftershocks out there as well. That's on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Fairly lengthy uh, fault system here, secondary uh, from the San Andreas Fault, the main plate boundary. Nothing unusual going on down there for now. Just, uh, as always, keeping an eye on it. It could move at any, uh, move at any time here. Uh, up in the Washington region, a decent amount of earthquake activity as well. A couple of earthquakes down here across the Tacoma area. He's about 12 miles deep or so underneath the region. Uh, 2.5 model, well, removes all of those quakes. 
but a little bit more active out there. Uh, also, the Stanley, Idaho region, the last earthquake looks to be a 2.7 here. Notice we did have another four pointer today in the mix of earthquake activity. It's just been, uh, it's been pretty active out here across this area of Idaho. 155 earthquakes, uh, a lot of that northern edge here of the sawtooth fault system and that's capable of producing a 7.5 earthquake the last uh, rupture on that display or the last rupture on that fault system there was about 4,000 years ago that 6.5 that struck back in 2020 was off of it uh, not associated with the sawtooth fault so um, that could be uh, brewing up some uh, larger activity here possibly uh, either way, there's the uh, earthquakes out there, occurred about seven to eight, sometimes deeper, nine miles underneath this region. Uh, those earthquakes probably showed up on Yellowstone National Park, so we'll go check out the Yellowstone overview. Uh, there's some of those earthquakes that are showing up um, from Idaho onto the local Yellowstone stations here. Uh, a couple local earthquakes uh, around Mary Lake. These look uh, fairly local here. At least this one and that one. Maybe this one over here as well. Uh, nothing big. I don't think this was swarming activity. I think this was, uh, well, I mean, it's, I think it was some type of outside interference or environmental uh, noise. Uh, because I didn't see that show up on anywhere else out here. Even the smaller microquakes. Uh, they would show up on nearby seismograph stations, but I think that was just a little bit of uh, noise out there somewhere from something. Uh, but for the most part, uh, earthquake activity there across Yellowstone, uh, a little on the quiet side. Like I say, there's a handful of smaller local quakes, but a lot of these bigger ones here uh, is a four-pointer and a couple of the threes that struck out there in Idaho throughout the day today. It's being picked up quite nicely out there on those uh, seismograph stations. Uh, Texas oil field still getting hit. Also one earthquake there under, well, it's going to say under Mexico, but it's not too far under Mexico. 4.9. That's kind of an odd one. Don't see too many earthquakes out there in this area. The historical model here shows, uh, well, not a whole lot. Maybe one earthquake here that was documented from 1900 to 2015. That, that was above the 4.5 range. Aside from that, most of the earthquake activity occurring there across the plate boundary, as expected. Uh, 1.7 out in Tennessee, the New Madrid Seismic Zone, quiet. Aside from that one little lonesome earthquake, got uh, 5.7, I guess that's going to be the largest quake here in the last 24 hours. That's over here, just off the coast of the... Um, Panama area right on the plate boundary of the this is going to be the the Cocos plate and the Nazca plate Cocos plate the smaller one Nazca plate the larger one that uh, is very visible and evident right here here's the Nazca plate Cocos plate happening right there on that fracture boundary it looks like uh, for a 5.7 earthquake could see things ramp up here across the area following these fracture boundaries Probably a strike slip boundary out there across the oceanic uh, fault zone. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have for larger activity? New Zealand, pretty quiet. A couple threes out there in the last 24 hours. I'm sure some smaller quakes as well. Uh, Japan, a bunch of fours stirring up and down the, the subduction zones here. The Kuril Kamchatka, the Japan Trench, and also the close to the Nankai Trough, but not quite. We'll know when that decides to go. That's... Coming up here, I, I have a feeling. 4.4 earthquake right now, fairly deep around the Myanmar area. It's 105 kilometers deep there. Looks like that's uh, pretty close to the Burma region here where that five pointer struck. Um, looks like that four pointer is a little bit further west here. That's just coming in right now. Uh, South America, handful of earthquakes. Alaska area just yeah, someone asked me about Alaska um, it just 
there's not a whole lot going on right now for any large earthquake activity. Typical subduction zone here that's always seen earthquakes, similar to California, but obviously California not a subduction zone. Uh, but twos and threes, you know, very common out here. No large earthquake activity. A little bit of movement up around Fairbanks, but even up here, this is uh, not out of the norm. Just a typical day out there, it looks like, across the Alaska region. Uh, Kilauea Volcano should be getting close here to an eruption right now. Let's go double check that and see what we have. Uh, episode 24 is likely to begin today or tomorrow. Interesting, they're forecasting it out. Uh, the window has been extended as summit inflation continues and forecast models are updated. So I chat about this a lot actually. We look at these uh, deformation charts here on every update. This is the uh, past month of the uh, last couple episodes of eruption. We're way up there though. Way above the previous level seen. And of course this last eruption here, we had uh, lava fountaining heights up around 1,200 feet. Could see that again, maybe higher. This one's going way up. Uh, so we'll have to watch that. That uh, is definitely interesting here. But as of right now, let's go check out the webcam, see what we have going on across the summit area. Uh, still light out there. I don't see anything going on. It looks like maybe some pre -splat uh, splattering going on. See a little bit of a glow kicking up here. It may be getting ready. It may be getting close here to uh, popping right now. I do see just a little bit uh, kicking up. So if you want to watch that, they do have a YouTube uh, channel out there. Let's see which one is that? Oh, that's just the um, just a still image. But they do have a, a YouTube channel that can take you to a live view. Oh, looks like it's getting close. Alrighty, um, what else do we have out here, folks? Uh, let's check out space weather, see if anything uh, is rocking on the sun. There's a face out there. It doesn't look all that excited. It looks a little scary. Uh, a little shocking look there on the sun. Um, yeah, the flaring threat here looks like it's starting to diminish a little bit. Only a little bit of sea flare activity. Watching 4105 over here. It's a newer sunspot that's popped up out of the eastern limb. Getting a lot of these different popcorn color individual localized spot areas, if that makes sense. You can see them all here on the on the um, magnetogram image. That's a sign that this thing may be growing, getting more complex. So uh, we do have still a 10% chance of X flare activity. This region over here looks like it's starting to uh, just fade off and further decay. Uh, so right now, this main area we want to watch over here is 4105. That uh, is turning into the Earth-directed view. It is uh, flaring a little bit, looks like, right now. Nothing big, but uh, it does have some development in its uh, magnetic growth stage. No major roars there in the forecast. They're calling for maybe unsettled conditions here, but I'm really not expecting anything as we have not uh, seen any further CMEs Earth-directed. A couple different coronal holes, maybe they're counting for that, but... Uh, the position of those coronal holes are north and south of the Earth's sun plane. Uh, Storm Prediction Center here for the remainder of the night. For Wednesday night, early, super early Thursday morning. Got uh, some slight risk out there across the panhandle of Texas. In, uh looks like New Mexico as well. A little 2% chance for some tornado wind and some hail threats uh, for the um, remainder of the evening. Uh, for the day on Thursday, that severe weather risk expands across Southern Plains and way up here. Look at that trail of severe weather. Uh, tornado threat, though, limited back here across Oklahoma, Texas, and portions of eastern New Mexico again. But we do have some wind and maybe a little bit of hail threats out there. Of course, big-time hail out in Texas and around Oklahoma and Kansas. That uh, is obvious here. They, they do get those big storms. Uh, looks like day four out there is uh, looking likely for some severe weather as well. So we'll have to watch that as we get a little bit closer to the weekend time period. There's 4.3 right now. That's that one that showed up there on the globe. Let's see here. Yeah, awfully, just a little quiet down here across Southern California. 
you know, typical smaller microquake activity. Yeah, we had that three pointer, but it's been uh, it's been a little eerily quiet here. I'm sure this is going to kick back up again. Just uh, it goes through these little stages here, these little cycles of uptick and then quietness, and uh, just a repeat cycle there until until eventually a big one hits. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Um, have yourself a wonderful Wednesday night. We'll see you guys back out here for the Thursday morning update. Take care, and uh, we'll see you guys out here real soon. Take care.